So, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, we uh, saw uh, last week uh, uh, one important subject uh, about uh, three worlds. How uh, in the Bible uh, there are three different worlds, and uh, the world uh, actually means a three different setup on the same globe. So, it is the destruction of the uh, first uh, setup, the first world uh, where there was a uh, heaven and the earth. In the heaven, uh, it was ruled by, that means the atmosphere, it was ruled by uh, Satan, uh, you see, and the fallen angels who came and manifested in the flesh and who demanifested. So <clears throat> there uh, we see that the first world was uh, destroyed by the flood and the earth, uh, there was giants who were born uh, uh, because of the relationship of the fallen angels uh, with the uh, human beings. So first world was destroyed. And uh, since then, the second world began. And even in the second world, uh, the Satan and the fallen angels are ruling invisibly from the earth atmosphere. But uh, they don't have the power to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. That power has been taken off uh, by God uh, to the fallen angels. So they are now ruling through the human uh, ministers, the corrupt uh, ministers. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, we read in the Bible that uh, this second world is going to be destroyed very shortly in the fire. So it's not a little fire. We have seen that it's a fire of uh, God's wrath. So, and shortly after this one, the new heaven and the new earth uh, is going to be established. So the new heaven and the new earth uh, is uh, uh, Christ's thousand-year kingdom, a thousand-year rule. Okay. Now today, we are going to, you see, uh, study one of the important uh, uh, subjects uh, also. And uh, you see, uh, as usual, please kindly make the notes. And today, what we are going to see is based upon, uh, you see, uh, the verses which our Lord told in uh, Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Okay, Peter, brother, can you read? Matthew 7, okay. Enter in at the street gate, for wide is to uh, wide is the gate and broad is the way that lend to destruction and may there be ways. Go in threads because thread is in is the gate. And narrow is the way which lead to unto life, and few there be the be that find it. Thank you, brother. So here Jesus is actually speaking about the two ways. So he's speaking about a narrow way, you see, and a broader way. So Jesus is actually speaking about the two ways. So where does the two way go? You see, uh, the two ways are there. One is a narrow way, you see, and one is a broad way. You see, so in the narrow way, only uh, few are uh, going. Only few are able to identify it also. But if you see in the broad way, many are going on the broad way. You see. And that Broadway, you see, huh, is going for destruction. Okay. Now, uh, what is the meaning of this one? You see, generally, uh, you tell me, where does the narrow way go and where does the Broadway go? What do you think, Peter Buddha? Peter Buddha and Vishnu Buddha, what do you think? Where does the Broadway and narrow way go? I think broad broad way goes to hell and narrow way goes to heaven with Father. Okay, good. Vishnu Buddha? Uh, Jesus uh, thought about these two things. One is uh, the broad one is the like um, earthly, like a uh, physical thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the narrow is the uh, uh, two way to go to heaven. And it's a Christian life. Very good, brother. Okay. Good. Thank you for your views. So, very good and very nice. So, 
generally uh, you say everybody thinks that uh, it goes to the hell and heaven but if you read that verse carefully it says the broad way goes to destruction and narrow way goes to life neither does this verse clearly say that it goes to hell or heaven no what is this destruction and what is this life we need to think it over because uh, what is the destruction that is at the end of the broad way so it is not the destruction that comes uh, in each and every man's life something uh, it is a destruction of the finance uh, or a destruction because of accidents or lack of education or because of age or sickness or a failure it is none of these things uh, because it says the end of the broad way is destruction so which is the end which every man face in their life if you see that is death so here actually jesus was trying to speak about the death which each and every man face in their life at the end of their journey in this earthly life therefore there is a verse in the bible that says uh, you see it is death read proverbs 14:12 proverbs 14:12 uh okay thank you read brother there is a way which seems right unto man but the in there of are the ways of death very good uh, you see there is a way that seemeth right to man you see now uh, what did jesus say proud is the way you see and many are walking in it uh, many are able to see it uh, you see that's the reason uh, everybody are entering in the broad way only but end there are for the ways of um, death uh, so so it's end uh, is death uh, this is the way which seems right to man this is the way of enjoyment selfishness pleasure you see many people tell no oh life is short make us feet uh, enjoy it before it melts you see this is you see the broad way and the first person to inaugurate this broad way and walk in it was our father adam adam was the one who sinned against god and because of his sin he was the first one to walk in the broad way and it took him 930 years to walk in the broad way and reach the end of it that is death and today through adam the whole mankind uh, walking in the broad way now broad way has become so smooth and so slippery that uh, as soon as a man is born they immediately face uh, its uh, end that is death you see some reach it uh, in 30 years 60 years 50 years so what is the reason if you see the reason is sin you see sin the wages of sin is death and it is sin that is leading all mankind uh, on this path of death okay now what is sin what is the meaning of sin in the bible if you see bible says that all unrighteousness is sin and uh, you see this all leads to death let us read first john 5:17 brother first john 5:17 first john 5:17 uh vishnu brother you, you can also read or peter brother you can read brother raju it is not time it's very difficult to read for me okay. you know i'm sorry. okay not a problem peter brother say, okay i will read please okay all wrong doing is sin and there is sin that does not lead to death very good brother see all uh, you see is sin all uh, unrighteousness is sin dear brethren see that's what uh, the bible says uh, you see all unrighteousness uh, is uh, sin so anything uh, you do against god that is sin so adam was the one who ate the forbidden fruit so what happened uh, you see in the world if you see uh, sin and death uh, entered into the world because of one man uh, you see dear brethren therefore Uh, god knew that everybody would sin because of uh, adam and like adam therefore god condemned every mankind into death through adam so the entire mankind today 
are walking in the bird way because of the old man adam so let us read romans 512 romans 512 peter brother can you read okay well for as by one man sin enter into the world and death by sin and so death passes upon all men for that all have sin very good so by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon everybody for that all have sin therefore dear brother what is uh, sin you see any violation god's law you see anything disobedient to god is sin let it be you see a small sin or a big sin like for example even if you steal a elephant that is sin in god's sight even if you steal a small groundnut also that is also still a sin in the sight of god so let it be whatever uh, you see sin you see like uh, different uh, irrespective of the magnitude so it is sin so even telling lies you see can we tell lies is it correct to tell lies we you i'm asking a question can we tell lies should we tell lies uh yes or we can tell lies yes. huh? okay let us read what does the bible say about the father of lies john 844 brother john 844 They are of your father, the devil, and the lost of your father will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is uh, there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Aha! Uh-huh. You see what does he say? When he speaketh a lie. he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it you see he is a liar and he is the inventor of it because he was the one who spoke a great lie against god's character in garden of eden so telling lies is indirectly we are choosing to become the sons of the devil you see ha huh? in the garden of eden ha huh? Satan used the serpent and said, "You shall surely not die." So today, you know, the whole world, you see, is going under lies. You know, on average, a man speaks more than two fifty lies per day. It seems. How? How is it possible? Like, for example, doing a business, telling lies. Sir, this is important material. I have uh, brought it especially for you. Oh, you won't get any. Day. Uh, the quality anywhere that would be a lie you see you would have bought bought some uh, somewhere in some local market uh, even if you go for vegetable shop uh, he will tell uh, what is the cost of onion oh this is 20 rupees oh your neighbor told uh, is only 10 rupees you are charging 20 rupees again that's a lie even if a child doesn't eat food ha uh, huh? you see what is the parents tell the parents tell no oh eat food uh, or else what will happen ha huh? Uh, police will come and catch you, isn't it? Huh? If you enter somebody's uh, house suddenly, and they would be having, uh, you see, a lunch or dinner, if they invite us, uh, immediately, how do we react? Ah, uh? we would tell, no, no, just now finished everything. Ah, uh, you see, deep down, such type of lies is also a lie. Therefore, on average, if you see, man speaks more than two fifty lies. Uh, you see, and not only that one, dear brother, and today. all sorts of sinful activities uh, like smoking drinking that's become a you see status quo in the society parents uh, involve their children in these activities and think that this is a you see a, you see a standard in the society that we should do all these things uh, before public uh, along with the family and today the children are so involved uh, in uh, you see explicit uh, things uh, that even as studying they have been having uh, affairs and love all these things and all the brethren so this is the reason that mankind is walking on the broad way yeah, see but uh, did god uh, open any way 
for man, you see, to escape from the, this uh, uh, Broadway, if you see, yes. God, you see, opened a way out of this Broadway when he gave the law through Moses. You see, after nearly 2,000 years of uh, Adam's sin, God gave the law through Moses. If anybody could keep the law, they could have attained eternal life through the law. So let us read Leviticus 18.5. Leviticus 18.5. Peter, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Therefore, keep any you know? status and my judgments, which is a man do. He shall live in them. I am the Lord. Ah, you see? Ah, if any man keep my status and my judgments, if a man does, he will live by it. But unfortunately, none of the fallen man could do it. You know, because everybody were condemned in Adam. Everybody were sinners. And nobody, a sinner, could keep the perfect law. Therefore, this way out from the law never worked out. Therefore, in Romans 3.20, Apostle Paul clearly said that the, by the law, law is the knowledge of sin. Read Romans 3.20. And therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Uh, oh, one minute, brother, one minute. So, you see, Romans 3.20, it clearly says, uh, by the deeds of the law shall no man be justified. Okay? And uh, the Bible clearly says that if somebody was justified by the law, then uh, the death of Christ was vain. So, if Christ has died, that itself is a clear proof uh, that, uh, dear brethren, you see, uh, that the uh, law was not uh, at all, uh, you see, uh, making a way for mankind out of this broad way. Okay, when there was no other way for mankind to escape from this uh, path of death, God sent his son to die on the cross. And Jesus, by his uh, death on the cross, he opened a narrow way. So let us read about that one in uh, Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 10.20, brother, please. By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Yes. So, Jesus opened a new and a living way. You see? A living way. A way that goes to life. You see? How? He opened it by his body. You see? By sacrificing his body on the cross. That is to say, his flesh. We all know when Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple was torn into two parts. So it was torn from top to bottom. That clearly shows that God himself opened the way, access to heaven only after the death of uh, Jesus Christ. Therefore, you see, we see that uh, this narrow way leads to life. Okay. 
But uh, if we clearly observe Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it says that there are only few that find it. How strange, how God has made a narrow way that is going to life so that only few can find it? Why? Why did God make a narrow way going to life only very narrow so that only few can identify while preparing a very broad way for the whole mankind to go to death? Imagine, we have express highways, you see, do... Uh, uh, you say government uh, build the express highway so that everybody can die. Uh, no. They build the express highway so that everybody can live a comfortable life. Uh, you see. And uh, they have this narrow path in the villages. Uh, why? Only a few can walk. Uh, you see, dear brethren. Uh, but why did God uh, do in this awkward way, in the very opposite direction? He should have opened a broad way for life and another way for death. Uh, then why did God do like this one? If you need to understand this one, we need to understand why the narrow way is narrow. The verse says that narrow way leads to life. Now, to understand why this way is narrow, we need to understand what is the meaning of the way that leads to life. What is the meaning of the life that is mentioned here? See, if you see in God's creation, there are different levels of life. See, if you see mankind was created on the earthly level, but below that one, there was also a creation of animals. They also have life, but they are not equal to man. They are a little bit lower than man. Still, if you go lower, there is a vegetation life. You see, there is a plant and animal, huh? trees. That is also got life, but that is got a little bit lower than the animals. Dear brethren, if you still go up in the spiritual, uh, you see, face, you see, the angels have life, and above the angels are the archangels, and above all is God. So, all these things are life. They are different levels of life, but they are not one and the same. The ultimate life is a life which God Himself is having. That is the divine nature, the immortal life. Like, for example, see, we have the sun. You see, the sun rays falls on various items and uh, it gives uh, various reflections. Like, for example, if it falls on a brick, it gives the image of and quality of a brick. If it falls on a tree, it gives out uh, the quality of a tree where we get fruits, vegetables, uh, flowers, everything. But if the same sunlight falls on a diamond, it's it gives a very sparkling brightness uh, as if the diamond itself is the sun. Does it mean that a uh, diamond uh, is a sun? No. Similarly, God is the source of all life. Uh, today, man is having life. Uh, it seems that uh, man is the ultimate life. No, dear Buddha, God is the source of all life. Uh, he is the one who is the, having the highest of life, uh, the immortal life, uh, where death is not at all a possibility. You see, this is the life that narrow way leads to. And Jesus was the first one to walk in this narrow way. You see, and achieve this immortal life, uh, that divine nature. Dear brethren, Jesus did not have immortality even before he came to this earth. Uh, he only attained that one after dying on the cross. Uh, Jesus himself tells that one, you see, that he did not have life within himself. Uh, you see, if he had life within himself, if he was immortal when he came to earth, then how could he die on the cross? This itself is a clear proof. Jesus was not immortal when he came and died on the cross. Let us read John 5.26, brother. John 5.26. For as the Father had life in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself. Ah, as the Father is having life within himself, he is not dependent on life for somebody else. The same way he has given the opportunity to the son to have. But when did Jesus attain that one? Only after proving to God that faithfulness unto death on the cross. Then only God gave this one to Jesus. Read Revelation 1.18. Revelation 1.18. 
I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Very good. See, he says, I am that liveth and was dead. How can an immortal person die? This proves that he did not have immortality. But after dying on the cross and resurrection, he says, Behold, I am alive forevermore, dear brethren. Now, Jesus uh, is uh, immortal. He is having that life which narrow way led to the immortal life. Uh, dear brethren, you see, huh? now Jesus has left us an example to walk in the same narrow way walk of life. And we also can attain the same immortal life, the divine nature, where death is not at all possible. Let us read 1 Peter 2.21. Sorry, 1 Peter 2.21. Uh. Okay, 1 Peter 2.21. For even here unto where I called because Christ also suffered for us, having leaving us an example that is to follow his steps. Ah, that we should follow his steps. Uh, Jesus left us example, you see. And uh, if we also walk in the same narrow way, you see, and remain faithful to God till our death, uh, it is the same reward that is God is going to give us. The same divine nature. Read 2 Peter 1 4 first. 2 Peter 1 4. And Ashish, brother, you can read later Revelation 3 21. Okay, Peter, brother, read. Second Peter, verse one, chapter uh, chapter one, verse four, mm. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and the precious promises that by this it might be uh, pa partakers of the divine nature, having escaped that cor corruption that is in the world through. Lost. Ah, you see that we may be partakers of divine nature, dear brethren. Partakers of divine nature. This is the nature which God Himself is having. You see? Huh? Now, uh, read. Ashish, brother, you're there? Can you read yes. Revelation 321? Yes, brother. Okay. To him that overcomes, will I grant to see through in my throne, even as I also overcome, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. Mm -hmm. You see? Huh? To whom is this promise? Sir? To him that overcometh, even as I also overcame. Jesus, how did you overcome all the obstacles, all the trials, all the tests in his life, all the persecutions, sir? voluntarily, cheerfully? And one, only those people who do this one voluntarily, sacrificing their life cheerfully, only they will get uh, the chance to sit uh, with him on the same throne. Read Romans 2 7. Romans 2 7. Hmm. To them who by passing continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Ah, glory, honor, and immortality. Dear brethren, immortality. That is, you see, uh, eternal life. This is the life that is promised to the church. Okay, dear brethren. Uh, therefore, you see, when the reward is so high, such a great reward to be equal to God, to be sitting with Jesus on the same throne, it's not so easy. This can't be given to any person, any layman, any, you see, just because uh, you believe or believe, you trust, uh, just because of anything, God can never give this one because this is the irreversible nature. Once if somebody goes there, does any mistake, uh, you see, God could never destroy them because God has promised them and given them the reward. He could never take it back. Therefore, they have to be thoroughly tested in this earth. Therefore, there will be all sorts of tests for those who are walking this narrow way. That is the reason God has made this way very narrow so that only few can find it. Only few can, you see, cover it completely. Those who have the zeal, that energy and faithfulness, they would run. Therefore, test is required. You see, imagine in this world, if you want to become an engineer or a doctor, is it so easy that you can aram, say, and comfortable in a better process, uh, complete your degree? No. 
how much test is there, how much severe pressure is there. Everything on all angles will be tested because why? Any mistake from you, there will be a lot of people suffering because of you. That is the reason God pushed us into severe test. Let us read Acts 14.22, brother. How do we go to heaven? Okay. Eastern then being the disciples and increasing encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. they, we, need, uh, we need to go to many hardships there, to enter the kingdom of God. We can't go on bed of roses. Many hardships. Uh -huh. Very good. You see, too much tribulation you shall enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said the same thing. He never said you will be having comfortable life, you will be receiving all blessings, no need to worry, no. Jesus said, there will be difficulties. There will be tribulation. But don't worry. I will help you, he said. Read John 16, 33, brother. Okay. These things I have spoken unto you that is that in me a might have is. In the world as I have tradition, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. Very good. You see, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He will help us. That is the promise, dear brother. Not that uh, you see some uh, huh? will be removed of all trials. It is there. In the midst of it, he will show us a way to escape. Read First Corinthians 10 13, brother. First Corinthians 10, 10 13. This had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that they are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that uh, may be able to bear it. Very good. You see, brother? Yet you may be able to bear it. See? There's no temptation that is very strange, but along with the temptation, God will show us the way. That is a, you see, a speciality, dear brethren. And one who is faithful till the death, what they're going to do with Christ? We're going to heaven. You see, they're going to rule with Christ for a thousand years. Read Revelation 26, brother. Chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On souls be second that had no power. Very but good. they hmm. shall be praised of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Very good. They shall reign with him for a thousand years. You see, the thousand years. They're going to, this is the purpose of God calling the church you see, to heavenly salvation. Okay. Huh? So how will they be? If you see, they will be like Jesus. So Jesus appeared after resurrection to Apostle Paul on the way to Damascus. And what happened to him? He saw Jesus in so brightness that he lost his eyesight. It is the same nature that is God going to give to us. That's what Apostle John says. First John 3.2 Now we are the sons of God and it doesn't appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. As he is, we will see him. Because we will be like him. Dear brethren, when Jesus returns the second coming, at the second advent, he will close this narrow way. This narrow way will be closed. You see, then what about the people who are walking in the broad way? Not everybody are coming out from the Broadway. Only a few people are accepting Christ. Devudran. So what about the rest of the mankind who are living on the Broadway? Who are walking on the Broadway? Who are going to destruction? What plan God is having to them? Has God made no plan for them? You see, in the Bible, John 1.9, it says, Jesus is the true light that uh, lighteth every man that come into the world. If Jesus is the true light, why? What is the plan of God? You see, we read in the Bible that uh, John 3.16, God so loved the world uh, and whosoever believes in him uh, should have eternal life. Uh, not one should be perished. Uh, 
You see, then what is the plan of God now? So he loves so much the world that he gives only son. Then surely God must be having some plan to plan. John the Baptist seeing Jesus said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, world. And what is his plan for the entire mankind? What is this plan for the people who are still left over in the broad way? Dear brethren, has God made no plan? Yes, God has made a plan. When Jesus returns the second coming, he is going to close this narrow way and open a highway for the entire world of mankind, the dead mankind to come back to life and walk in this, uh, you see, highway. They're going to be resurrected and brought back alive in the same flesh to this earth. And there will be a highway. Let us read about this highway in uh, Isaiah 35.8. Isaiah 35.8. Um. And, and, and a highway shall be there and a way, but it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the way faring man to fools shall not hear theirs. Uh -huh. You see, it is a highway. A highway shall be there. A way that shall be called. It's a way of holiness. Uh, you see, uh, even, you see, a fool shall not make a mistake. This is the highway. Now, who is a fool in the Bible? You see, as per the Bible, in Psalms 14, 1, it says, Huh? The one who says that there is no God, you see, Gnostic, they say, no, they don't believe in God. Those people are called as fools in the Bible. In a thousand years, this highway will be so clear that each and every mankind, you see, even those who did not believe God now will start believing in God in a thousand years. Huh? Now, continue. Verse 9, brother. Verse 35, 9. Isaiah 35, 9. No lion shall be there, nor any revenuous beast shall go up thereon. It should, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Uh -huh. No lion shall be there. Eh? In the highway, there won't be any lion, it seems. Sir. There won't be any beast, it seems. Sir. It shall not at all be found, it seems. It will be only for the redeemed. Now, what is this lion? You see, in uh, Christ's uh, kingdom, won't there be any lion? Let us read Isaiah 11, 6 to 9, brother. Nehemiah, brother, you're there? Nehemiah, brother, can you read Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to 9? If you have the Bible, can you read? Sir, I don't have Bible. Okay. Uh, Peter, brother, please read, brother. No lion shall be there, nor any... No, sorry. It... Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to Got it, brother? Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to 9. Uh, Peter, brother? Uh. 11, 6 to 9. Uh. 11, chapter, verses 6 to okay. 9. 11, 6, okay. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the ailing together, and a little child will lead them. Hmm. Continue. Okay, the calf will feed with the bear, 
Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. Ayya. The infant lion will eat straw like the ox. You see, this was the condition in the first world. Remember the three worlds lesson? First world, all animals were vegetarian. The same vegetarian condition for the, all the animals will return in his kingdom. Continue with the next. Huh? The near the whole of the cobra and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Uh -huh. That means in Christ's kingdom, in the highway, this lion will be there, it will be eating straw. Then which is the lion that is mentioned in Isaiah 35, 9? You see, we all know the first class, how to study the Bible. How do you study the Bible? Hear a little, hear a little. So it's the scriptures. There are 10 languages, uh, 10 types of languages in the Bible. So this is not a literal language. So lion in the Bible is who? Who is our uh, enemy? Who is our enemy? Tell me, who is our enemy? Satan. Ah, Satan. Satan is compared to lion. Read 1 Peter 5, 8, brother. Be sober. Be violent. Because your uh, adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about the seeking who, whom he may devour. Uh -huh. You see, be sober, be vigilant, uh, because your adversary, the devil, is a lowering lion. See, Satan is compared to lion. In Christ, uh, you see, thousand years, Satan won't be there. He will immediately return, and the first thing you would do is bind Satan for a thousand years. Read Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2. Revelation chapter 20 verse 2. Bishto brother, Nehemiah brother, hope you are following up. Chapter 20 verse 2. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Aha. Uh -huh. Bound him for a thousand years. See, that means in a thousand years, Satan will be born. That is the meaning. The lion won't be there. Now read verse 9, brother. Isaiah 35, 9. It also says, there won't be any ravenous beast. So, if lion is Satan, then what is the meaning of the beast? The beast are the other tools of the devil. Cinema, club, disco, bar. You see, all this... Evil activities will be totally stopped uh, in a uh, thousand years. It won't be found at all. Now, what was 10? Isaiah 35, 10, brother. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and, and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall up. Uh, up joy and gladness and sorrow and shining shall play away. Uh -huh. You see? The ransomed of the Lord return. Remember the second class? Ransom. Jesus paid the ransom for the entire mankind. How could one person die for the entire mankind? Because Jesus died for Adam. Because through Adam the sin came. If Adam is redeemed, automatically in Adam, the entire race will be redeemed. So, who will come up in the resurrection if you see the race of Adam? The entire uh, mankind who were all born in Adam, they will come up in the resurrection. How will they come up? It says, they will come with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. You see? Huh? How? You see, dear brethren, they will have a crown upon their head. That is everlasting joy and song and gladness. Imagine if somebody dies in their house, what pain, what sorrow. None of this world's riches or anything can comfort them. But if the dead come back to life, 
such a joy dear brethren they will feel so happy this is what god is going to do in thousand years when christ is going to rule on this earth for thousand years the express highway will be opened the entire dead man can will come back to life uh, and they will walk in the highway and learn the truth uh, dear brethren uh, you see read uh, isa 29 18 and 24 satan shall be bound everybody is ears and eyes will be opened and they will accept christ as a savior isa 29 18 and 24 29:18 hmm 29:18 hmm in that day the deep will hear the words of the scroll, scroll and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see hmm read uh, verse 24 hmm those who are wayward in spirit will gain understanding those who complain will accept instruction uh huh you see the deaf were the deaf even after having ears they did not hear the truth even after having eyes did not see the truth jesus said no he that has eyes let him see uh, does it mean that everyone will blind no spiritually able blind uh huh in thousand is what will happen uh? their eyes will be opened because satan is bound no then those who murmured those who argued those who did not want to accept christ as savior they will all accept christ as savior even therefore when jesus is going to return uh, he is given a thousand years rule why to bring back mankind from the fallen condition to the perfect condition that will take entire thousand years uh, therefore how is this express highway prepared uh? now how, how is the highway prepared first they will take out all the boulders all the rocks make the you see land very fertile very flat then prepare express highway put banners here and there telling this is the express highway to so and so place man can can comfortably travel similarly it is the same way that god's express highway will be prepared for 1000 years isaiah 62 10 Okay, as I say, six to ten, pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. Hmm. You see, take off the stones. Take off the stones. Uh, cast the highway. Lift up the banner for the people. So same way, God is saying, take out the stones. What is the stone? this is not a little stone dear brother this is the stone of stumbling you have no so many false belief ha huh? the stone of stumbling ha huh? so many rituals if a cat goes from this side to the side what will happen bad omen if it comes the reverse way it is good omen ha huh? see all these things are false belief uh, you see even if crow touches they'll become different it seems you need to take head bath huh? go to the temple all these rituals are there now in christ kingdom these stumbling blocks which are making man to fall yeah from faith all these things shall be taken off the banner of truth shall be proclaimed very high dear brethren you see this is going to happen in highway so in the bible there are actually three ways you see broad way in a narrow way and the highway everybody are walking in the broad way but only few people who escape now are walking on the narrow way but when christ comes this narrow way will be blocked it will be closed and express highway will be open for the all mankind to accept christ okay this is the class so we'll be sending the youtube link here the recording go through the video we'll be sending the notes also any doubts any questions you can definitely ask any questions any doubts brother you can ask anybody anybody brother vishnu brother nehemia brother peter brother i'm okay thank you so much wonderful teaching nehemia brother any questions no sir okay peter brother no thank you 